All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 1129, 1129, Brownells Mag Dump, Community Preparedness. Oh, got a lot for you guys today. Duracoat finished firearm for you. We're actually going to do something a little bit different. We had somebody write in, uh, write into our helpline and ask some questions. I thought, well, you know how it is. It's uh, your teachers. Well, if you had a good teacher, they said, if you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand, because if you have that question, then probably other people do. So we're going to answer that question. Excuse me while I whip this out. Clear my throat. Brownells bullet points. Uh, We got some news from them. They just released a, a press release about a mag dump we got the student of the gun homeroom of course as always talking about being dangerous on demand or not dangerous on demand depending and uh, then we're going to talk about community preparedness communal living what's going on in the world and why you should care all that on today's excellent soon to be award-winning episode of student of the gun radio Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right. Hey, Jared, have you been back in the gym yet since I left today? You? Today is my day. Today's the first day you're going to be today back in the gym? Today is the first day, yes. Wow. It's been two weeks. It's a long time. I feel like a slob, even though in the span of timelines, two weeks really isn't that long. Mm. Uh, all I'll right. Tell I was you just what, curious. It's been a long, it feels like it's been such a short time because there's so much going on with a new baby and everything, oh. but we're finally in a, what I tell people is that you and mom were here for the first week, so that didn't really count. After you guys <laughs> left, all the wagons fell, I mean, all the wheels fell off the wagon. All the wheels fell off the wagon. Oh. All of them fell at the same time, and then, so now we've developed a routine, so it took us about a week and a half or so after you guys left to uh, get into something, some semblance of a routine. Mm. Uh, but now it's going well. Yeah. Last night was the first night she didn't um, have her nightly. Usually she has this morning cry spell and a night cry spell. It's like from 9 to 11 in the morning and 9 to 11 at night. Mm. We get to go to bed. But uh, yeah, last night was the first night she didn't have that, which was oh. nice. That poor baby, she's surprised. I know. She's surprised. <laughs> you see the, the the picture I sent with the surprise <laughs> <Yeah>. face. <laughs> uh, she's surprised. Oh, yeah. bless her heart. So back in the gym today. Back and, in the gym. Uh, hopefully, I'm not set back too far because I was about that close to reaching my goal. Literally, mm-hmm. like that close. Yep. You you needed to pull another inch, and you'd have been good. Yep, that's what she said. So uh, yeah, the thing we talked about the other day with my knee. Uh, Oh yeah, what coach? Yeah, that? he said this probably from being in a car. He said spending a lot of time in the cars is is hell on your joints and makes them tight. So, yeah. Um, anyway, all right, Duracoat. Da, 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 Dur- Did we already we already played the intro? Yeah, Duracoat finished firearm. Let's go there. All right, so uh, before we begin, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys an asterisk, caveat, whatever. I do not work for Duracoat. Okay. I use their products, and I have been through the Duracoat University. So there's that. So I probably know a little bit more than the average person, but I'm not a professional. I'm just a person who, who knows. Yeah, if you've decided, you know, all right, I've, I listened to you guys and I'm excited. I'm going to do this and so forth. My first Duracoat project ever. Great. Awesome. I'm going to give you some best results for first time users. Step number one, don't cheat yourself on the prep. I'm That's not, probably the I'm most important part. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Uh, and and I've, I've, I've been guilty of this, you know, first time. 
I got a can. I got the very first can and can. I was so excited. I couldn't wait. And I was just like, ah, it's okay. I'll just wipe it off and so forth. And and there were spots where it didn't stick. Um, also, materials. Some materials are, are better than others. I can tell you this, that the Glock slides are fantastic. Putting um, Duracoat onto the Tenifer Glock slide is, is great. Uh, and I've actually had really good success with Glock frames, too. However, not every gun is the same. Uh, you don't, you know, some people are like, should I, can I, can I put it on wood? You can, but it's kind of like, do you need to, do you want to, is it something you have to do? I don't know. Uh, I put, I have, I'll, I've been guilty of putting dirt coat on wood. Uh, not nice, super polished hardwood rock maple or whatever, but you know, just what's a, it. what's a, um, example of that, that I can like picture in my head. Uh, the, uh, the one of the AKs, one of the AKs I had, it had a wood stock and okay, um, a plastic, plastic out if I and a plastic pistol grip and a wooden stock and a something else. And anyway, but like I generally, a normal AK. yeah, generally I don't normally put uh, Duracoat onto wood, uh, aluminum, aluminum. I like that. Yeah, yeah uh, aluminum is is generally generally pretty good, but you got to be careful. Um. Because some finishes, some factory finishes uh, are kind of slick and plastic is, and I'm finally, plastic and polymer is going to be your biggest challenge because not all polymers are the same. That's for sure. Uh, and what, what I found is the softer the polymer, the more difficult it is to get the Duracoat to stick on it. Now, they have a product that's called adhesion promoter that you put onto polymer, uh, whether it's pistol grips. You know whose polymer is actually really good for accepting Duracoat? Magpul. Uh, uh, Magpul pistol grips, Magpul forends, Magpul stocks. They're really good, uh, probably because it's a high-end polymer. Uh, they're really good at accepting the Duracoat and staying, but there are some... So if especially I guess the um, the trick for you is if you're looking at polymer furniture on your gun, whether it's an AR, AK, a, you know, whatever, if you're looking at it and it looks shiny. If it looks shiny, it's going to give you problems. Uh, and you say, well, I, you know, when you look at a, a Magpul pistol grip, it doesn't look shiny. It looks kind of subdued. And there, there's a reason for that. Um, P mags are fantastic for for dura coating uh they're fantastic now regardless of what whether the material is steel aluminum polymer whatever you need to ensure that every single possible spec of oil rem oil hoppies number nine packing grease whatever is off of that thing and because and this is how you'll know if you skip a spot that one little part in the corner and you just glance over it and there's still oil there, you're going to spray it. You're going to put Duracoat on it. And then that one little piece is going to fleck off because there was oil there. So you, you've got to be diligent. If you want to have a good looking project, you got to be diligent. Uh, the best way to do it is if you have a, a, a sand, a sandbox or sand, not sandbox, a, 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 a blasting box, a sand blasting box, you know, you put it inside there and you grab the gloves and you uh, if you've got that, uh, it's great. If you don't have that, that's cool. They actually have a product called uh, no sand uh, and you shake it up and then you take a blue 3M scratch pad and you go all over it. Um, you want to do that and you also want to use the uh, the true strip that something we call cinnamon. Uh, if you don't get that, you don't get it. Uh, but true strip, you want to put the true strip all over that son of a, a puppy and and take a like i said a blue scratch pad and go over every single nook and cranny everything any place where you're going to want to put the duracoat you want to polish it i'm not polishing you're, you're sanding it down you're roughing it up you're getting all that grease oil everything fingerprints whatever off of it uh, and yeah when you're doing it put gloves on put like rubber gloves on or nylon gloves or whatever the blue generic gloves 
put blue generic shop gloves on your hands uh, so you're not getting finger oil all over the project when you're doing it. Yeah. So that's step number one. Okay. That's step number one. Now, when you've done that and it's completely dry, like bone dry, awesome. And if you want to take an air, you know, uh, just an airbrush, just, just forced air and go over it, you can do that too. Uh, now, now that you're ready to dura coat, step one, and this is my advice to you, light coats. You start, when you, and when you spray, you start off project. You know, you, see, you know, just understand what I mean? When you spray, Why would you, you start do that? off project because you're, you're going to get an initial, an initial like that. And you don't want that initial going on to your project. Oh, yeah. So you start off project and sweep. Uh, come back, come back. And the, the watchword is light coats because you can always put more on, more on. You can always put more on. <laughs> Uh, so, but you can't take it off. I mean, unless you want to, <laughs> if you find that you put way too much on and you realize it, you can stop, put true strip on it before it hardens and scrape it off and start over again. But you probably don't want to do that. So start with light coats. It's way easier to just put a little bit more on than to realize that you put too much on. So light coats. Take your time. It's not a speed contest. Take your time. Do it. <laughs> Examine it. Uh, and what I would do, do the first coat, light coat, stop, let it dry. Now, if you have a uh, an oven, if you're super advanced and you've got like a, a you know a drying oven, put it in there. Uh, I would not recommend putting it in your wife's kitchen oven. I would not do that. And you don't have to have an oven. Okay, you don't have to bake your coat. It air dries. If you want it to go faster, if you're a professional and you need it to go faster, you put it in a drying oven, you pull it out, and you go faster. Uh, but you don't have to do that. Some some coatings are like you have to spray it on, put it into a 200-degree oven, and leave it for an hour. Dura coat, you don't have to do that. But you do need to do a light coat and let it dry. Now, if you're going to do camouflage, if you're going to do camouflage, you're going to do the templates. This is the advice I'm going to give you. Set, do it on a weekend. You know, maybe Friday night, go out in your shop, strip the gun down completely, you know, strip it down, get all every, you know, prep it, do the whole prep process. And then that maybe that night you want to do the first base coat, whatever the base coat is, black or green or brown or whatever. Put it out, hang it on the hangers and the rods and so forth, and, and leave it. No, leave it alone. Go away. Let it, let it alone and dry. And now, how long is it going to take to dry and be cured? Now, you can actually, a after like 15 or 20 minutes, it's dry enough that it's not drippy or wet. After an hour, you can touch it. You should be able to touch it without it. Uh, but before you put those templates on there, let it harden. And this is going to have a lot to do with where you live. If you live in Mississippi, where the air drips pretty much all the time, it's going to take longer for your project to dry. That's kind of the way of the world. If you live in high desert or very dry regions like where we live, um, it's going to dry faster. There's just less moisture in there. That's the way of the world. But either way, if you're going to do a multicolor pattern, you need one or two things. You need a drying oven or you need patience. So let the first one dry. Give it, I would say, like in, like a day. You're like, oh, man, I don't have the time. Yes, you do. You have that kind of time. Calm down. You want to look good or you want to look like crap. Give it time. Then put the template on. Then once you put the template on, do your second coat very light very light um and if you want to do a third coat rinse lather repeat same thing oh uh, the the one <laughs> what what did steve call it postage stamp it, you know if you put too much on when you take all the templates off 
you should be able to take your finger and rub it over that project and not feel any lines. Oh, if you yeah. feel, he, he goes, he calls that the postage stamp effect. Uh, and if you do that in his class, you fail. <laughs> 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 if, if he runs his finger, well, if he did over yeah, your project and he piece. felt lines, that's the postage stamp effect and you fail. <laughs> that means you put it on too thick and you shouldn't have to put it on too thick. Uh, that's the point. You shouldn't have to put it on so thick that you can feel the ridges uh, with your finger. So uh, that is my quick down and dirty first timer advice for you. And one more piece of first timer advice, then I'll shut up. If you're really unsure about yourself and you don't want to screw up a nice gun, pick something you don't care about, like either a cheap gun or an ammo can or something. You know, if you just want to test your skills. Sexy can uh, contest. Yeah, Remember just, you know, yeah, get, a, get a great a big steel ammo can and do everything I said, you know, uh, decoat or, or degrease de-oil the, the ammo can, prep it, do all that, and then do your thing. And if you're happy with that, then you're like, okay, that turned out well. Now I can now I can do the my favorite gun. So there you go. All right. Uh, and if you would like to be able to do Duracoat like an expert, go to studentofthegun.com slash Duracoat. It's in the show notes. You click it. Mm, that'll take you right to Duracoat University. And uh, you can learn how to do it like a pro, and then you can tell me to be quiet because you are now a pro and you don't need my advice anymore. There you go. All right, moving on. Uh, SDS Imports. SDS Imports is the, uh, the the title sponsor of Student of the Gun Radio. Thank you very much. And if you go to SOTGGiveaway.com, that's SOTGGiveaway.com, you have 15 days, 23 hours, and 28 minutes to get in. On, nope, now it's 27 minutes uh -oh. to, to get in on the contest. And you, this week, or this month, <laughs> now this week, this month, you can win. You can win a, it is the TAR-12P semi-automatic shotgun, magazine-fed shotgun. And they're even going to throw in a bonus 20-round drum for you guys just because they like you. There you go. Thank those guys. Thank them for being a part of Student of the Gun. Oh, bing, bang, boom. Oh, High Point Firearms has inexpensive firearms for the first time gun buyer or the second time gun buyer or the third time gun buyer. Um, and uh, have we talked about it lately about the about the the bag stash gun? Yeah, the, um, uh, we, I, I, we've talked about it recently, but I don't bug remember. Out bag gun? Yeah, I don't remember yeah. if it was you and I off air or if it was talking on air. Yeah, so bug out bag guns. Um, if you're like, what is a bug out bag gun? Well, a bug out bag gun. You guys have bug out bag, a bug in bag, a get home bag, or whatever you call it. I don't care. This emergency pack that you have staged and it has stuff in it, and I say. You should probably have a gun in that. You're like, why would I have a gun in that? I've got all kind. Of, I've got food, and I've got extra water, and I've got medical gear and stuff. Okay, whatever. Um, you're probably gonna want a gun in that. But here's the thing: you don't want the gun that you put in that shouldn't be your favorite gun. It shouldn't be the the super cool gun that you like to pull out and, and impress your buddies with on the weekends. It should be one that you're psychologically willing to just leave alone. And that's what I did. I took a high point C9 and I put it in a an arc bag and I put two. Haven't you listened to the internet? Those things don't work. Oh yeah, they don't work. And um uh, and I put a flashlight and a Sar knife and sarcasm ammo. for those of sarcasm. You didn't catch it. Heavy sarcasm. And we're going on three years now. And about once a year I open it up, pull it out, and it looks like it's brand new. The ammo is shiny, it looks brand new. It's not corroded. There's no rust on it. And it's there. And if I need it, it's there. So that is a fantastic idea for a high point C9 or C380 or, 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 or what are we joking about? They're going to a C30. <laughs> super. It's Thanks super. For Thanks for asking. <laughs> 
Uh, have you noticed since the uh, shot show's over that no one's talking about that anymore? <laughs> 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 All right, Zach, play the uh, new listeners. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. There you go. There you go. All right. Yes. And the sexy can contest, we did that a few years ago, and you guys got in on that and you had a good time and it was all fun. Uh, one of the things that, that I do uh, when I have a Duraco project is generally I, I don't I don't have the I don't have a uh, uh, professional paint shop. I just uh, I just use the can and can technology and quite often there's a little bit left because you don't want to run out in the middle of the project that's that's not the best the best plan is to have a little bit left not to need a little bit more um, and what i'll do if i have a little bit left i don't want to waste it i have a few green gi joe ammo cans mm -hmm. uh, and gi joe ammo cans generally rust on the edges and the bottoms if you're going to have one rust more often than not, uh, because it picking them up, setting them down, picking them up, setting them down, the paint chips off of the bottom, it chips off of the hard edges. And then that's the part that starts rusting. That dirt coat won't chip. So no. So that's a great what, place for it. Yeah. So what I'll do is as I'll, you know, grab an ammo can or two and, uh, I'll, I'll use the extra, whatever it is, black, green, brown, whatever, um, and put it on the ammo can. It's a good thing to do. It's a good thing. I've got ammo cans. Let's see. When did I get out of the Marine Corps? I got out of active duty first, the first time in 1991. So I've had, I have a couple, not, not a lot, but I have a, because back when, when I was in, getting a hold of an ammo can was is an exciting thing. It was like, ooh, I got one. And you're not getting it. Um, later on in life, it was like, yeah, there's everywhere. But um, when I was in, if you could get a hold of an ammo can, you did. You were doing something. And I've got a couple of cans that I've had for 30 years or so. Um, all right, moving on. Moving on, moving on. It's time for Brownells Bullet Points, brought to you by Brownells, ironically enough. Boom! Bing, bang, boom. All right, Jared, click that thing and open it. And I want you to... Back hip, dump for Washington. Yeah, hip them to this is the latest PR. It says Brownells announces Mac dump for Washington in response to the standard capacity state, magazine. Not yes, the Washington, city. Washington State. In, a, in response to the standard capacity magazine ban passed in Washington State, Brownells will donate $2 for every aluminum Brownells AR-15 magazine sold to the Washington-based Second Amendment Foundation. Second Amendment Foundation is currently planning to file a lawsuit against the state of Washington on behalf of gun owners in the state. The Brownells mag dump has two main goals. The first is to help Washington state gun owners procure reliable, proven, standard capacity magazines for their AR-15 style firearms before the ban goes into effect to help guarantee their ability to exercise their Second Amendment rights and freedoms. The second is to supply cash to the Second Amendment Foundation that will be earmarked to help fund a lawsuit to be filed against the ban on all magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. I've got an, an arbitrary number. Why don't um, we put that money towards building a gallows? <laughs> what is a uh, big in, one in here somewhere? And I wish I could find it quickly, but in oh my daughter's drawn circles in my book. You got to keep those things away from your daughter. I know. Uh, luckily, it's pencil. 
but in here in this book somewhere it says that something along the lines of that if it gets to the point where you're fighting battles in court to save your liberty then you're already you're on the defensive and it's you're already, already losing yeah, yeah you're already losing and how we got to that point in in uh, humanity right now i'm still trying to track down the the dominoes that were falling uh, over the last few generations but that's where we are now mm-hmm. there we're we're trying to fight for our liberty so you, in the courts so we we have to go to what is the what did what did we learn what did our founders believe was the primary goal of government and why do people to secure what? the individual liberty and of the citizen unquote, yeah and unquote unquote happiness of the citizen. and to protect the rights of the citizen yeah. to defend the rights of the citizen that is the goal of government that is why people are willing to form themselves into governments uh, or to to surrender some of their autonomy to a government is for the promise of that government protecting their rights there that is the the role of government so when the government fails to do so then they are they're failing in their uh well in their responsibility to the people and it's an important distinction between government protecting the rights of the citizens and government protecting the citizens themselves Mm -hmm. two totally different things it's not the government's job to protect the citizens as individuals Uh, it's their job to to defend the borders uh, and to enforce law, uh, malum in se, not malum prohibitum. But l- ladies and gentlemen, and, and on, uh, if you look, Jared, if you look forward, if you jump forward to the, uh, I think it's Friday, uh, Friday's notes. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got a story on Friday, and I'm just going to give you a quick teaser. Apparently, Amazon is removing people from their Seattle offices because of a crime spike huh what where's seattle at what state is that in oh that's washington oh 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 okay but they're right. too focused on punishing mm. law-abiding citizens rather than taking care of the crime that's going on already. yeah yeah there's actually wasn't it actually wasn't it seattle that had the uh the antifa takeover yeah well seattle and portland and portland i've got it there's a, actually an excellent quote um and i shared it on the exclusive paul markle fascist book page this morning i'm gonna go ahead and read it to you guys it's from niccolo machiavelli from niccolo oh, machiavelli. machiavelli machiavelli and what did niccolo machiavelli have to say well i'm going to tell you in just one second here and uh I, I actually the reason i remembered this quote was because i used it in the examining the armed citizen book and if you guys haven't seen the uh, Examining the Armed Citizen book, if you haven't read that book, uh, you actually should. But uh, it goes a little something like this. This is Niccolo Machiavelli. Machiavelli said, when you disarm the people, you commence to offend them and show that you distrust them either through cowardice or lack of confidence. And both of these opinions generate hatred. There you go. There you go. The, you know why uh, people uh, hate the government? No, yeah, there you go. Our good friends, our good friend at Online Great Books, Scott Hambrick, he posted on his personal blog a an apocalypse book list the other day, and we're going to get him on to talk about it to discuss. There's 36 books that he put on the list. Woo! Yep. So we're going to look and, and see. Why Are these books one, to but, read during the apocalypse because you uh, got time to, have, in your hands or? To, to make sure you have these books? Oh, OK. In okay. hard copy. And there are three from Machiavelli, The Prince, The Discourses on Livy and The Art of War. Those three from Machiavelli are on the list. Is that I, his own art of war or is that Machiavelli's take on Sun Tzu? I haven't read Machiavelli's The Art of War yet, Hmm. so I don't know if it's his specific or if it is his take on Sun Tzu. Okay. All right. Cool. So there you go. Uh, Support our buddies at Brownells. And they actually, if you you go to the Brownells mag dump right now and you click on the link, you'll see that their aluminum, their aluminum magazines, which are, they're good mags, they're USGI spec, um, they're on sale. 
So not only are they donating money to the Second Amendment Foundation in Washington, but they actually are putting the mags on sale. They have gray ones, and I don't know if they're if they're tan or FDE or whatever desert tan, desert tan. There you go. Yeah, somebody somebody was making fun. They said, "Why are there eighteen different shades of flat dark earth?" <laughs> like I don't know. Um, flat dark earth FDE didn't exist until halfway through GWAT, and then everyone's like, every manufacturer in the world had to come up with their own version of a brown, of a desert brown. There's coyote brown and FDE and desert tan. And, oh, man, heck, if you go to Duracoat and you, and you go into the brown section, <laughs> there's a lot of browns. There's a lot of browns, and none of them are in Cleveland. So there's that. Uh, if you're thinking, man, I should get a couple magazines. Well, get your butt over there and, and uh, support Brown Ells and support a good cause and, and tell them that, that uh, Student of the Gun sent you. How's that if, sound? If you go to brownells.com, you can go on this page to the Magged Up for Washington page, and it gives you instructions. Uh, the, mag the magazines eligible for the $2 donation include the following. It's got a picture of the magazines, and then it has a link to the products. It says Brownells will make the $2 per mag donation through June 24th, 2022. So you've got a couple months. Mm. Get as many as you can. Yeah, you got plenty of time. Plenty of time. And and if if the uh, if the court thing doesn't work, then we can just build a gallows. I've been telling you guys, there, uh, we've been sharing that on Liberty Mastermind for a long time. You can go online and and find a how to. Everything you need is available at Lowe's or Home Depot, depending on you know whichever one. <laughs> <laughs> or your local or your local lumber liquidators there you go <laughs> uh who is that guy the the yellow hat cowboy or whatever that was trying to sell you wood you remember the the me the yellow fella is trying to sell you wood no oh you guys help me out you guys in the discord yeah, this the yellow wood. Yeah, yellow wood. The iconic yellow fella. He's going to sell you yellow wood. And I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you can build a, a gallows from yellow wood. Uh, we could find out. I mean, <laughs> and but make sure, you know, if you're going to build a gallows, whether it's from material that you get from Home Depot or Lowe's or your local lumber liquidators, whatever. If you're going to build one, make sure that, that you get some good rope. Don't go cheap. Don't try and buy this cheap nylon rope or, you know, something like that. Get a good, a serious, good hemp rope. You know what I mean? I, I think that in the United States, something that we need more of is hemp farmers to produce really good rope. We used to. America used to make good rope. And then that scumbag freaking uh, what's his nuts, George Hurst or, or William Randolph Hurst. George was his grandpa, William Randolph Hurst and, and his scumbag pals uh, over at DuPont decided we needed to kill the hemp industry. But uh, it, it's time to bring it back. We, you can in some states, you can grow hemp for rope and stuff, right? Can you do that in Utah, Jared? Um, yeah, I believe that hemp is a good thing here okay all right there you go all right moving on moving on well it's time for me to be quiet and you guys listen to zach talk for a second shop sotg.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun whether you want to expand your brain increase your marksmanship or help keep your family safe all that plus the pimp hand brands that you love ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. All right. That there you really go. Good. Da -da -da -ba -da -ba All right. Crossbreed Holsters Homeroom. Student of the Gun Homeroom brought to you by Crossbreed Holsters. When you go to CrossbreedHolsters.com. Or you can follow the link in the show notes. Make sure that you use the promotional code S O T G. Ah, oh, 
dangerous from Madison Rising. That's right. Dangerous on demand. All right. Color me shocked. Color me surprised. We we told Ellie about this story and she went. She she was surprised. She's shocked. Um, <laughs> that's the face we need to use. A, we need to use that face as the surprise face now, though. She's doing uh, a lot of the same things Ruth did, where <laughs> you're like, I'll, I'll make a noise and she'll do the, mm. the I've raised one eyebrow. Eyebrow like, raising. I love it. Well, it's because you cloned her. I know. You cloned Ruth in the womb there. We oh. figured out the art of cloning. Yeah. So this story comes to us from, there's lots of stories, lots of sources, but I thought, what the heck? We'll just randomly pick one. Uh, WCPO Cincinnati Channel 9 on your side. And uh, the title of the story is D Wine. What did D Wine do? What? Did you open it? Y- yeah, I'm on the wrong story. You're on the wrong story, Art Art. D- what did D Wine do? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't know how I got on the wrong story. I was on the corn one. <laughs> D Wine signs Bill. <laughs> Bill changing Ohio's concealed carry requirements. Is he a rapper? He could D-Wine. be. D-Wine. Ohio's concealed carry requirements will be eliminated after Governor Mike DeWine signed bill, Senate Bill 215 or the Constitutional Carry Bill into law Monday. The bill makes concealed handgun licenses optional, meaning the only reason a person 21 or older could not carry a concealed weapon in Ohio would be if state or federal law prohibits them from having a weapon. Ohioans were previously required to pass a background check and show proof of eight hours of training before obtaining their license. Uh, and submit money, cash, and fingerprints. Pay the dollar bills. Yeah, dollar, dollar bill, they yo. They were ransoming their rights is what they were. That's right. They were holding their rights hostage. Under the new law, people will con- with concealed weapons will not be required to promptly inform officers they are carrying a concealed weapon <gasps> during a stop. Hmm. Dean Reich with the Buckeye Firearms Association called the signing a great moment for Ohio and for those who wish to more fully exercise their constitutional rights to keep and bear arms. But but some local leaders like Hamilton County Sheriff oh the sheriff have spoken out against the bill. Well, you got to right, hang, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What is the sh- what is the sheriff's name? Uh, Charmaine McGuffey. Charmaine. All right, three guesses, and the first two don't count. Charmaine. Now, why is Charmaine a communist? I don't know. We'll find out. What did what, Charmaine McGuffey say? She said, what this bill represents, in my mind, honestly, is lawlessness. It represents the wild, wild west, McCuffey said in February. No, 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 it <laughs> did not yeah. say that. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. It's still the same argument. It puts our officers at risk. It puts one more layer onto what could be a very stressful situation for the officer. Ah! Did All right. <sighs> is this, this has been the talking point since as far for, as I can remember. Since 1987. Okay, well, we have data and facts that show that that's not the truth anymore or it never was the truth probably but definitely not nowadays so all you guys and what's wrong in with since... the wild wild west anyway oh all you guys it was a good show it's a good show I had jim west um uh you guys in 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 hamilton county you just lost your minds you like are you people in cincinnati and hamilton county i got a question was Charmaine McGuffey, uh, did he, she, Z, uh, did, did, did he, she, Z come from the LPGA tour? Yes. Uh, so somebody needs to, to send a letter to Sheriff McGuffey and remind he, she, it, that you're not the king. In fact, you, you're supposed to be there to protect the rights of your citizens. Yeah. And, and, uh, your job is to protect the rights of the citizens, not to decide. You know, that that brings me back to, and I was going to talk about this on, uh, uh, I don't know, I'll just talk about it now. We, last week, we talked about how uh, in New York, uh, the, after the um, Heller decision, 
and the, they did the Heller decision in D.C., and then they did the one in New York. And the the, the court says, well, this isn't this, this. Calm down. We're not saying that you still can't have what do they call them? Sensitive areas. Yeah, it was the you couldn't obtain a concealed carry license to carry in. You, I think you, it was sensitive areas. Yeah, you, well, the, the government is still allowed to to. Uh, create sensitive areas well they're allowed to do whatever you allow them and to do. and and you say and, but what are those sensitive areas like government buildings and you know and then courthouses and and so wait oh hang on okay hang on a second so government buildings yeah those are the sensitive areas where the peasants aren't allowed do you know where that goes back to jared where the thinking goes back to it goes all way back into feudal times when you may not be in the presence of the king bearing your sword okay uh, you can you cannot you may not peasants are forbidden to enter the presence of the king or the lord or the master bearing arms hmm. so that's that's the mentality the mentality is because you say okay so hang on a second so you say <clears throat> that you're not allowed to go there into that building. Well, what's special about that building? That's where our masters live. See, that's where our, that's where the royalty, the the American royalty, they live in they live operate work in that building. So you peasants can't carry your swords into the presence of the king. You're forbidden to have your sword in the presence of the king. Who said that these people are our kings and our masters and our lords? It's it's it goes right back to the well, we're gonna pass this bill about derp and derp this and that, but it doesn't apply to police officers. What? Or or agents or employees of the state. What? So the bill is so that bill only is for the peasants. Yeah. Yeah, because in the United States of America, well, as we all know, I mean, the founding documents say that there's one set of rule for the peasants and there's another set of rules for the ruling class, for the royalty and the elites. I mean, that's that's a, if that's not a constitutional republic, I don't know what is. This is when you scratch your head and you're like, no, Paul, I, I don't think that in the and this is the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I have my hand right here. I don't think it says that there are two sets of laws, one for the peasants and one for the rulers. It doesn't say that in here, does it? And yet we allow that to happen. Going back to the Washington story, Jared, would you like to put money down that the bill in Washington prohibiting the peasants from owning super capacity magazines uh, exempts agents of the state yeah that's default tyranny so here's the deal what I, if i was if i was in the saf i my case would be that this well first of all not only does it violate the the second amendment uh it violates the fourth amendment the fifth amendment but it also violates the not the bill of rights the united states constitution where it creates a law that exempts the ruling class and applies it only to the peasant class and i would make the state i would force them to go into open court and defend the fact that well if you work for the state if you have a uniform and, and you get a paycheck from the taxpayer this is when you say i pay those mother lovers out of my own salary they steal my money, put it in their bank, and then they use that money to pay people to persecute me. So get this, wrap your brain around this Washington, D.C. or Washington State people. So every time uh, I'm assuming that Washington State has a state income tax because they're communists. Every time you get your paycheck and you look and see how much money was taken away from you by the state, remember what they're going to do 
is they're going to pay people to come and arrest you if you violate the law of having too many rounds in a magazine. <laughs> but when they come to arrest you for violating that law of having too many rounds of a, in a magazine, they're going to have rifles that have too many rounds in the magazine. And those rifles were paid for with your money. <laughs> Did your head just go nuclear? <laughs> yeah. And there are people who sit in your state capitals and think, yeah, that's good. That's the right thing. I don't see a problem with that. How could you possibly see a problem? It's for safety. For safety? The for safety. That, one of the things that really annoys me about the sheriff's statement is that uh, she's talking about it puts our she's officers asinine? at risk. How? It puts our officers at risk. A, a first how, but that's not even what matters. You're separating the officers from the citizens. Are they yeah. not? Do they not have the same? Do they not have the same rights? She doesn't say it puts all citizens at risk. Yeah, it puts our officers at risk. Well, it okay. puts the special people. Uh, oh, what did Mike Weiner? So Weinman, what, what, what kind of risk is do the citizens have when they? are restricted in carrying well firearms. you know see but the peasants are supposed to die that's why they're there peasants are disposable we just get more we can get more peasants you got to protect the royalty so what did what did mike weiner from the government affairs office of the fraternal order of police what did he say He mentioned concerns about eliminating the permit process. Yeah. Uh, mm. I don't see a quote. Oh, here it is. He said, it's just remarkable how many people who started out law abiding had their concealed carry and got disqualified for doing something they shouldn't be doing. What? What? It's just remarkable. Is it remarkable? How many people who started out law abiding had their concealed carry? and got disqualified for doing something they shouldn't be doing. What does that mean? I don't know. I, I Malam Inse. So are they? According to a report by Attorney General David Yost, yo, yo, county sheriffs issued more than 200,000 licenses last year. That was just in one year. Nearly 3,000 were denied and 420 were revoked for issues like mental incompetence or felony conviction. Okay. What's the percentage? What's 420 out of 200,000? Like one? Um, I don't know. Four, <laughs> 420. Are you sure it was 420? Sure it wasn't 419? <laughs> uh, point, point, it's... 0.21 percent mm. so what you could do with uh mike weiner there is uh it so it's 0. 0.0021 right so that's less than one percent that's a fraction of a percent right what you could do if you wanted to turn the tables on mike weiner is you'd say how many police officers were fired or terminated from their jobs for violating laws? And that's when you say, shut up. You're not allowed to ask that question. What well, does, does that ever happen? No. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. How many police officers in Houston lost their jobs when they executed a warrant an illegal warrant that was based upon a lie and then murdered two people. That never happened. Actually, it did under Art Acevedo. Two police detectives lied. They falsified evidence to get a warrant. So the warrant was based on a lie. Then they kicked in the door and they assassinated the people inside. Yeah, but peasants are supposed to die. We can get more of them. What's your point? <laughs> yeah.
yeah, we shouldn't let people carry guns and follow the Constitution because somebody might not, someone might break the law. Oh, so because someone might break the law, then none of the citizens and that I love that logic. Breaking the law. Somebody Breaking might the law. break the law, so no one's allowed. So you have to let the law abiding. And notice how no one says in here how this has absolutely no bearing on whether or not criminals carry guns. They didn't say anything about in here about uh them the department losing a bunch of money because mm. the, they knew better yeah somebody somebody slipped him a note and said don't talk about the money because they'll crucify you <laughs> the crazy thing is so at is least they got they're smart. allowing the citizens to choose do you they want a smart. firearms passport or do you just want to carry with your constitutional right yeah no one's saying that you can't still get one you can still give them your money and fingerprints and, and photos still- and and, and, you know, and every year and, and see, that's the thing that it's a, it's a regenerative income because they know that every year, a certain percentage of permits are going to expire and people are going to have to show back up and give their money again and so forth. Uh, yeah. So congratulations to, uh, LPGA former tour champion, uh, Charmaine McCullough for um, for not getting the memo and not mentioning the money, but uh, nobody nobody apparently sent her a note and said, "Don't say Wild Wild West because you look like a complete and total moron." Uh, I wish, I wish that I would have started like a scrapbook collection. Because back, this started. This is before the internet. Okay, there was there was no internet when Democrats and leftists and and lunatics that you used to have to read a newspaper to get this. Representative Democrat Representative Dick Jones says it's going to be like the Wild Wild West. There's going to be blood in the streets. People are going to be killing each other over parking spaces. You know where people kill each other over parking spaces? Chicago. And ain't none of them walking around with permits. Uh, And ain't none of them (laughs) lawful gun owners. Oh, I threw that in. I just got, actually, this was just sent to me this morning, this story, as we're recording. And when I saw that, Hamilton County Sheriff Charlemagne, Charlemagne McGuffey. Right. Wow. You people in Cincinnati just suck so hard. What do you mean, Paul? You voted for this turd. You voted for this tyrannical turd, this Democrat turd, this turd who thinks that she and her officers are up here. And you and your fellow citizens are down here. Let me guess. They promised you safety. When she ran for sheriff, she promised to keep us safe. Really? Did she? Is that the job of the police to keep you safe? Yeah, it is. Is that what the Supreme Court said? No, it didn't. Oh, you mean the Supreme Court said that the police can like park down the street while you're being murdered and go eat donuts and they're not responsible and you can just suck it or guess watch what the Supreme Court said on a subway. They, I mean, stand there on the other side, on the say, other well, side of the glass door ask for help. So we're not going to help you. Yeah, he didn't. Did he ask for help? Well, no, he was being stabbed. Well, did he ask for help? Well, no, he was in the process of being stabbed. Well, then they're not responsible. A court actually said that on record said the officers had no constitutional duty to defend him because he didn't ask specifically. Ah, but the Supreme Court says, even if you do ask, if you call 911 and say, help, help, people have broken into our house and the phone goes dead and they show up and they walk around. And they say, and they call dispatch. They're like, I don't see anything wrong. Tell them to check their kids. 
tell them to count their kids again. Little home alone for you guys there. Yeah, I'm at Nakatomi. That'd be a false alarm. So, <laughs> so, so then moving from that to the next story, it's uh, interesting because this. The, the sheriff in Ohio doesn't want you to be able to protect yourself. No, to that's, that's his story, job. Says his 83 year old convicted murderer out on parole charged with killing, dismembering woman's body and leaving it on busy street. Where was this at? This was in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Where's Brooklyn at? Brooklyn. <laughs> A 83-year-old man previously convicted of murder who was out on parole has been arrested and charged with killing a woman in Brooklyn and dismembering her body. Harvey Marcelin, 83, allegedly murdered 68-year-old Susan Layden, severing her head and limbs, leaving her body in a garbage bag in a shopping cart that was discovered on a busy Brooklyn street. That sounds disgusting. It's a good thing they have all that gun control in New York. You know what I mean? This is a quote from... Brooklyn District Attorney Eric Gonzalez. Last week, my officer charged my office charged Harvey Marcelin with allegedly concealing the severed head of a woman in her home and discarding the victim's torso in a bag on the street. It's that's hard for me to read. Today, the grand jury indicted Harvey Marcelin for murder, and my office is committed to vigorously seeking justice. The really? facts of this horrific case are gruesome. And unsettling, and my heart is with the victim's family and friends. Really? Oh, thoughts and prayers? See, you say, well, no one could have predicted this because this Harvey Marslin guy, this was the first time he'd ever done anything bad, and no one could have possibly known or expected this. Right, Jared? Actually, no. Go down to the bottom where it's in italics. NBC report says he has a history of killing girlfriends. In 1963, Harvey Marcelin was sentenced to 20 years to life for a murder conviction. Court documents show he was paroled in 1984. Court documents show Marcelin returned to the prison in 1986 to serve a 6 to 12 year sentence on a separate manslaughter conviction. Marcelin became eligible for parole in 1991, which he was first granted in 2019. So the justice so the new york third. justice system had got had captured this guy for murder and then they let him out and then they caught him again they're like well this time is going to be manslaughter okay so they put him back in jail and then they let him out and then he proceeded to kill another woman but don't worry, New York. Eric Gonzalez is going to get justice. Justice for whom? The three dead women? Seems to me like New York doesn't have a gun problem. Seems to me like New York has a criminal justice problem. Seems to me like you can murder your girlfriend in New York go away for a vacation, come back out and then do it again and then go away and they'll let you back out and you can do it again. And the people of New York just keep voting for these scumbag Democrats over and over and over and over again. Hey, New York, you don't have a gun problem. You have a politician problem. You have a government problem. You have scumbags in your government that are more worried about the rights of convicted murderers than they are about the people. Now, you, as a citizen of New York, cannot be trusted to carry a gun in public. But Harvey Marcelin, the twice now going to be thrice convicted murderer, he can walk around on the street. Do you see a problem with that? Well, yeah, but Eric Gonzalez said that his heart hurts. Oh, did the politician tell you that he feels bad? The politician told you he feels bad? And did the politician tell you he's going to fight for justice? Really? And that makes you feel good? 
you're idiots. And everything bad that happens in the state of New York happens because the people in New York are weak and spineless and keep voting for the same exact imbeciles that create this problem. But but he went on TV and said his heart hurts. Oh, oh, well, hell, Eric Gonzalez says his heart hurts. I guess that that makes it all better. I guess that'll bring the dead woman back to life. He's going to fight for justice. Maybe time. I think the only justice that we're going to get here is maybe they'll put this monster back into a cage and time will catch up to him and kill him because the people of New York don't have the stones to do it. The people of New York don't have the stones to take a guy who's murdered his girlfriend, convicted, put in jail. Yeah, give him a vacation, let him back out. Wow. Wow. Are you paying attention? Nope, you're not paying attention. You're just wearing your masks, doing what you're told, being good little slaves. And I'm not going to apologize for it. It's your fault, New York. You scumbags told me going on eight years ago. Oh, this this Safe Act thing will never stand. We're gonna we're gonna fight it in court, and Kumo's gonna be gone. Kumo wasn't gone. It took Kumo sexually molesting women. It took the Me Too movement to get rid of Kumo. Not you. All you proud, brave Second Amendment. I fight for the Second Amendment. How? I went on Facebook and I complained. Cool. Cool story, bro. How'd that work out? Hey, Jared, quick, quick check. And then we're going to go on to community preparedness. Is the SAFE Act still the law of the land in New York State? Uh, I think so. Yes, it is. Is there a Democrat communist in the governor's chair in New York State? Yes, there is. Is there a Democrat communist mayor of New York City? Yes, there is. You've learned nothing, New York. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes, New York City, New York State, you get the slow learner of the century award congratulations all right let's move on to community preparedness Doo -doo -doo. i just wanted to hit that button <laughs> mm. was that a little too hard jared was that a little too too mean uh we're talking about community preparedness yeah now. this is positive outlook all right positive something Positively productive that you can do. Positive and productive. Step number one. All right. I've talked about this before, but I'm going to talk about it again. And listen up, freaks. If you go to your Amazon shopping cart, you guys go to your Amazon shopping cart right now. Oh, if you go to your Amazon shopping cart, I want you to add community leadership to your Amazon shopping cart. Okay. Like, I can't do that. No, you can't. All the stuff that we love to buy. And that's how we solve problems. Isn't that right, Jared? That's how we that's how we get not fat anymore. It, is we go we the as seen on TV, the perfect push up, push up the perfect sit up, the the uh, the abersizer, you know, we buy stuff. That's how we're going to fix the problem. I'm going to fix the problem of me being overweight by buying this thing that that Suzanne Summers, sh the the giant squeezy. <laughs> Do you guys remember the the Suzanne Summers thigh master thing that it was just a big spring with rubber pads on it that they made in China for four bucks? Do you remember that? You, no. get, you, you kids are too young to remember that. Oh, uh, look this up. Look it up. The Suzanne, the 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 the. Thigh blaster or thigh master or thigh master from Susan Summers. Master. It's still a thing. <laughs> oh man. Oh, Suzanne Summers. What thigh is master. This? 
Oh man, the master. See, your oh, video is unavailable, but you can still buy it for seventy five bucks. I, I, I <laughs> no, yeah, no. Suzanne Summers Thigh Master bucks. Gold and Butt Master Complete Toning System. Okay, so it's two different things for 75 bucks. Oh, do you stick the one thing in your butt? I don't know what this is. Did she stick that in her butt? What is this? There's a there's the so they they took a spring. The the Chinese slaves took a giant spring, put some foam around it, and charged you 75 bucks for it. <laughs> but it's okay, you can make four easy payments of 1875. So the reason I bring this up is because <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the, the video has been taken down, but I want to see how Suzanne Summers uses the butt master. Is it actually called the butt? Ma it is called the butt master. Yeah. Butt master. <laughs> you got to keep along with the brand. It's thigh master. <laughs> Now you're uh, butt master. I thought that's what Jesse Smolier was. <laughs> <laughs> we got a story about about Juicy Smolier, the French actor. That's coming up tomorrow on the bonus hour. And <laughs> but my point is this, ladies and gentlemen, if you're a prepared individual, and it should you should be a prepared individual. Is it wrong to have food stored up? No, it's not wrong to have food stored up. It's not wrong to have a gun. It's, it's not wrong to have a radio. It's not wrong to have flashlights and batteries and candles. That's not wrong. But what you need at the end of the day, the most important thing for a crisis survival, I'm not talking about you're sitting home on a Friday night and the power goes out for an hour, so you light a candle. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about crises. The hurricane sweeps in and whoosh, takes down all the cell towers, all the power stations, and it's dark for two weeks or three weeks or four weeks, depending on where you live on the Gulf Coast. That is a crisis. And what you need in a crisis, or let's say a complete and total economic collapse because your president is a meat puppet. It's almost like Joe Biden's doing everything he can to purposely destroy the economy. Almost. You need community. You need people. You need not just security people. You need everybody. And you need people. Mean? You need people in your community to exercise their strengths. Some people are better at certain things than others. Are you going to need security people? Yes, this is student of the gun, and you're going to need to protect what you have. Otherwise, thieves are, and thugs are going to take it because there are people out there that don't stockpile and they don't care because their plan is, well, if food ever gets short, I'll just go over to the normies and I'll take theirs. I'll go to New York and I'll take theirs because those people are all disarmed. I'll point a gun in their face and they'll give it to me. And if I get arrested accidentally, they'll let me out. I, if I accidentally get arrested, I'll be out on the street before the cop finishes the paperwork. So what's important? Community preparedness. And this book right here by Nicholas Orr, The Pipe Hitter's Guide to the Citizens Irregular Defense Corps. Zach, do we have signed copies of this in the store? Yes, we do. My microphone fell. Yes, we do. Available on shopsotg.com right okay. now today. Right now today. My wah, microphone wah, wasn't spreading wah, properly for some wah, reason. Wah, wah. All right. So in this book, the Citizens Irregular Defense Corps, first of all, uh, Mr. Orr talks about what exactly that is. What is the CIDC? Um. Uh, and the CIDC in here, he breaks it down into subgroups. There's the security group, and then there is the medical group, and then there is the logistics group. And that sh now a lot of you guys, you're like security, I get that. Uh, medical, I get that. Well, what is logistics? Logistics group, uh, during a state of emergency, resupply can be limited or cut off. It's critically important to, con to both conserve and secure fresh water, food, fuel, etc., if a community is inhabited by mature, prepared inhabitants, 
Uh, most homes will have supplies on hand. However, few citizens have the capacity to store large to store large quantities of drinking water, fuel, etc. Uh, the logistics section should be led by a mature person with uh, whom the community has established a trust. We talk, he talks about that and he, let's see, let's go back to the, let's go back to the uh, security assignments, intelligence and OPSEC, morale, organization and command structure specialists. The reason I bring this up is because you need to have these conversations before the crisis occurs, not after. Uh, because after is when people, well, half the community is already devolved to an every man for himself mentality. And that's what you don't want. You do not want an every man for himself mentality. Now, I, this guy right here, wrote an article, and it's going to coincide with the public release of this show about community preparedness and communal living. One of the things that I discussed this last weekend, I was talking to some people about having a prepared community and all the things that go into having a prepared community. Now, when we say community, people are like, well, we already have all that, man. In my town, we have all the stuff. Yeah, but the stuff in your community, from where does it originate? Well, well what do you mean? Trucks show up and they offload the stuff and it goes into the building and then we go get it. By a prepared community, I mean, what do you do in your community if the trucks don't come all the time or at all? But they always will, Paul. You don't understand. The trucks will never stop running. And the shelves will never be empty. You're just paranoid. Okay. Community is how do we function without the trucks? without someone in the capital fixing things for us. And they never fix things. They only make them worse. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, uh, we got a story from the Federalist Papers uh, org, And this is from March 4th. And what does it say, Jared? It says corn, <clears throat> corn and soybean farmer to Americans. Your grocery bill is going to go up to $1,000 a month. A farmer joined Tucker Carlson's Fox News show to warn that Joe Biden's failed economic policies in the war in Ukraine are going to cause the cost of foods to skyrocket in the coming months. If you think the cost of gasoline is a problem now, wait until summer when your grocery bill soars. During his March 2nd broadcast, Carlson informed his audience that Russia is a leading producer of the fertilizers and additives that American farmers use to help grow the crops that subsequently supply our grocery store shelves with food. But the war in Ukraine is set to put a major crimp in the ability of American farmers to import the nutrients they need just as the planting season approaches. With the U.S. and other nations levying sanctions on Russia for its aggressive invasion of Ukraine. Mm. Uh, ben Reinch, the owner of Blue Diamond Farming Company in Iowa and a farmer of 16,000 acres in that state, told Carlson that the sanctions will have a far-reaching impact on our food supplies in the very near future. Soaring, this is a quote from Reinch, he said, Soaring fertilizer prices are likely to bring f spiked food prices. If you're upset that gas is a, up a dollar or two a gallon, wait until your grocery bill is up $1,000 a month. Yep. And it might not just manifest itself in terms of price. It could be quantity as well. Empty shelf syndrome may be starting. We've been talking about this for quite a while now. Remember a few months ago when we reported that Joe Biden ordered the Department of Agriculture to start paying farmers not to grow food? Remember that? And in order to protect the environment, your administration decided they were going to take your money lease farm property and make it well so that it wouldn't grow food because that's going to probably we need to protect the environment from farmers remember this we came to this microphone and said why is the u.s government in the business of either bribing farmers not to grow food or stifling food production and how can this possibly ever be a good thing? 
Well, you see, if if far if there's less food, then it costs more. And so the people who make it, the farm co farm co is going to make more money. Kids, you got to you got to pay attention. You say, oh, that's no big deal. That's just one story. Mr. Scaredy Pants, Mr. Try and Make It Wound Scared. You're a fear monger. Yeah, that's me. I'm Mr. Fearmonger. We got a story that just came out, and you got to glean not the USA Today and the New York Post. Oh, this morning's New York Post. Uh, possible fears as COVID, COVID increases in Asia and Europe. Apparently, they need to hide something. They need to distract the the normies and the dummies from something. So the New York Times put out a COVID story this morning. No, we we dive a little bit deeper. Jared, you remember, was it a couple of months ago or maybe more, maybe three or four months ago when we went to like the National Grocers Forum where they're talking not to the public, but to each other about, hey, what are we going to do about the coming grocery shortages? So we went to foodprocessing.com. This is a magazine of the food industry. So this isn't something that the average normie is going to read. You say, okay, well, who cares? Mm, I don't know. Who cares? What's the story, Jared? Loading. 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 Jeez. China accused of hoarding grain. What? It says, let me make this. uh, You're going to make it big. Enhance. Enhance. China is keeping mass quantities of grain in storage to the point where it's affecting global food prices, according to the columnist for Bloomberg. Adam Minter, author of Junkyard Planet, Travel in the Billion Dollar Trash Trade, cities uh, cites USDA statistics pointing to what he's calling China's hoarding of key commodities. By mid-2022, China will hold 69% of the world's corn reserves, 60% of its rice, and 51% of its wheat. That's the whole world. So China, China, China is, is smart, apparently. So, but here's the question: Doesn't China like money? Why won't they just sell it and make money? Why would they hold it back? Why would they reduce their exports and keep it in their own warehouses? Does China maybe know because something? Because they feel like they're going to need it. Do they know something? China has several motivations for stockpiling. Minter writes. Fear of food shortages caused by COVID-19. That's whatever. Bull crap. A more general fear of famine, which has afflicted uh, China throughout its history, declining agriculture productivity due to factors like urbanization and a strong currency that makes it easier to import. Mm. So why declining agricultural productivity? Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Why would that happen? We, Jared, we've been on humans have been on this big blue ball for thousands and thousands of years. Right. And so going all the way back to Adam, we figured out, you know what? Take the seed, put it in the ground, pour water on it, rinse, lather, repeat, and food comes out or take Mr. Cow over there and let him walk around eating grass for a while and then turn him into steak. Right. We figured that out thousands of years ago so how it's not like someone woke up last week and said you know what people want to eat food what are we going to do about it? these people want to eat food how in the world do you have a declining agricultural productivity how does that happen oh i know when you let psychotic liberal psychos, Democrat communists, when you let the government put their hands into food production and they screw it up. I almost said that word. You remember? All right, Jared, if you read the Gulag Archipelago, you'll it, it reminds you in the Gulag Archipelago when Stalin and the other scumbag. Who's the scumbag that they put on ice so everybody could look at his body? Um, Lenin. Lenin, yeah. When Lenin uh, and Stalin, they're like, you know, those people down in that area, they're not down with the revolution. 
they're not down with the people's revolution. Send them to the gulag. You're, yeah, but like th- those people were farmers. Like they grow food. That's okay. Anyone can, any idiot can grow food. Take the people from the city and, and force them to go on to those farms where there's no farmers now. And what happened? Uh, millions of people starved to death. That's what happened. You mean it's not good to let the government interfere with food production? Yeah, what could go wrong? <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? So when I say this to you, you say, okay, Paul, you're talking about community preparedness, right? Community preparedness. If your thought is, I'm going to put on my armor and my helmet, and I'm going to walk around the neighborhood and keep it safe. Awesome. Who's going to wa- Who's going to tend the garden? Who's going to water it? Who's going to harvest it? Who's going to cook the food? Who's going to make sure the water's clean? Who's going to take care of the animals? You know, that's thing like, well, if things ever get bad, I'm going to go buy a hog. From who? I love these people are like, like, well, if things ever get bad, then I'll, I'll get a cow. <laughs> Where are you going to get this cow from, Jack? You're going to go to, you're going to order a cow on Amazon. Sarah, go to, go to Amazon right now. See if I can order a beef steer and have it delivered here. Um, or I'll order chickens. No, what you'll order is peeps. The, the, the little baby, not, not the marshmallow ones, but the actual ones that make noise. And you know, when those things arrive, eggs don't start falling out of them, right? <laughs> Like you say, oh, well, it's no big deal. I'm going to order. I saw on Amazon, I can go order. I can order chicks. And it's not like the dark web where you order chicks. It's like Amazon. You know? So we get these peeps like, yeah, you know that you have to take care of them and feed them and house them and keep them sheltered for a, a months, like a long time. Then then eggs start falling out of them. You got you guys know that, right? Eggs don't just start falling out of them like the day you buy them. You can get a plush cow. <laughs> you can also get a utterly cow mug with An utterly cow silicone mug. feet that look like the udders of cow. <laughs> you could get a, a baby unisex plush animal face bathrobe. Well, there you go. Looks like a cow. Okay, there you go. But you can't get an actual cow. No, you can't have a beef steer delivered to your house. No. Um, Kids, you you need more. You need a whole community. And as a leader, you need to be able to sit down and figure out the strengths and weaknesses of your community. And you need to play to the strengths of people. If you've got a guy in your neighborhood who's a champion barbecuer, right? One of those dudes that actually has a grill with a trailer hitch that he drives around in the back of his truck. That guy, he's so serious about it that his grill has wheels. Um, ask, go to <laughs> that guy and say, Did you know that most grills have wheels? Yeah. No, I mean trailer wheels. Yeah. Um, go to that guy and say, hey, would you be willing to like once a week do a community cookout and show off your grilling skills? And that guy'd probably be like, hell yeah, I will. Um, Or if you have a community, which which if you're fortunate to have a community of hunters, most of those guys probably have big white chest freezers full of venison or elk or antelope or whatever. Um, You got to figure this out. And the time to figure it out and the time to sit down with people and the time to talk to people is before, not after. And it just doesn't, unfortunately, most humans are in this I, I, me, me, I, me, I, 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 right? I can go to Amazon and buy whatever I need. I can do this. I can do that. Yeah, but I, I is not going to help you survive a societal breakdown. It's not going to help you when gas is $8 a gallon and the grocery store shelves are, are half full and people are fighting over $5 bread. That's not going to help. You need to get with your community and you need to start organizing your community now like now and i bring this book up the the cidc the citizens irregular defense corps um because it is a it's filled with how to step by step organizational um 
obviously firearms are important. Obviously, firearms training is important because it doesn't do you any good to fill warehouses full of food uh, when any a hole with a gun can just come up and steal it from you. So you don't. And China is hoarding food because China knows that in the very near future, thanks to the the irresponsible criminal corrupt behavior of our rulers, China knows that food's going to be more important than money. They know that. That's the signal. Okay. You when China is hoarding food and the grow and the farmers are like, hey, the government has effed up the ability for us to grow food and it's going to affect you. You, you might want to pay attention. You might want to pay attention or not. Or don't. I don't care. It's your life. Live it like you want to. All right. Real quick, boys, go into the Discord channel. And tell me, are there any uh, are there any questions that need to be answered? Uh, I'm not seeing any. I, there's at. some mentions. Someone said, "Screw you! You're a fear monger." That's that's me, Mister Fearmonger. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah, I, I do not see any questions. Right. Now. All right. Well, if there are no questions, I've got a question for you in the audience. Are you in the grad program? If not, why not? Uh, you should be. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about high gas price, question mark? Just buy a new car. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the butt pirate, um, Pete butt pirate, says, well, you guys wouldn't have to worry about gas prices if you just buy a new electric car. Is it yeah, really you're that right. easy? You're right. I'll go out there right now and spend that hundred thousand dollars that I have in my bank account on a new electric car. Oh, you can get one for sixty. Just go buy a brand new car. What's the interest rate now? What's it? We're going to talk about it tomorrow. The about how rates are really low. The, the ruling class, when the ruling class from their their ivory towers look down at we peasants, they're like, "Well, if you would have listened to us and bought yeah. electric cars." Uh, my question to you guys is. Why aren't windmill factories run exclusively by windmill power? I don't I don't want a Fargan electric car. I want a real car. You mean a How car that, that they can just that they can just shut off? Did you see oh, the Oh yeah, uh, like like they're doing they asked Elon to do yeah, they're Russia. Like, they're like, hey, why don't you, you shut them off? Like what? remotely shut off all the all of your Teslas in Russia and be like I don't what? think that's something that anyone should be like, able to do ever that wasn't part of the bargain when i bought this car no yeah all of you guys are like digital currency is the way to go i don't even have cash i have apple pay they're like what so they shut off apple pay in russia because they don't they're like well that's russia and they're mean yeah what if they decide that you are mean and that you shouldn't be buying stuff anymore and turn off your apple pay well they can't though that's they're not that allowed. That doesn't make sense. Like, yeah. <laughs> so if, if, if you feel, if you're listening to the show and you feel like this is the only place you can go to find some sanity, mm -hmm. the grad program is even better. If you feel yeah. alone at home in your own community, you're not. You're not alone. You're not alone. There's other freaks just like you. Yep. Just like you. Like a freak mm -hmm. like me. You Isn't there a song called a freak like me? If you don't believe me, then you can go to get SOTG.com. Just join the grad program for a 30 day trial, interact with some of the community members, and then you will believe me. All right. And so that brings me to the point where I say, ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, remember as you go forward, you're a beginner once, you're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content 
content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.